Hello, my name is Nino Strachey. I work as Head of Research for the National Trust uh, and I've worked as a curator but now more as a historian and I'm particularly passionate about the idea of buildings as biography, expressing the personality of those who created them. Um, and so that took me into this book, uh, Rooms of Their Own, looking at the interiors created by uh, Virginia Woolf, uh, Eddie Sackville West and Vita Sackville West at Knoll, Monk's House and Sissinghurst all houses which are now cared for by the National Trust and all the homes of writers linked to the Bloomsbury Group um, and so lovely and relevant for the exhibition here at the Fitzwilliam uh, but also relevant for me um, so how do I get into this topic personally well as a member of a Bloomsbury family I'd always tried to steer clear of Bloomsbury topics but a couple of years ago one of my colleagues rang me up to say they'd found a hoard of straight sheet papers at Knoll uh, and so I couldn't resist. Uh, and at that point, I had no idea that Eddie Sackville West, who lived at Knoll and was a friend of Virginia Woolf, uh, had also been a great friend of my cousin John Strachey and had uh, been with him at school, at university, and they'd lived together in London. Uh, and the papers at Knoll gave a window into the life of Bloomsbury in the 1920s um, uh, and led me into the research for this book. Um, and so through Eddie, I connected to Virginia Woolf, with whom he was a very close friend. Um, and that uh, led me into researching Virginia's life at her home, Monk's House in Sussex, um, and finding out maybe slightly different things about Virginia that we might not um, expect. Firstly, how much she loved entertaining, how much she loved people. Um, uh, there's a lovely quote from Christopher Isherwood, uh, who said that at Virginia's tea table, everyone was entranced uh, because she kept them spellbound with gaiety, delicate malice and gossip. Um, and I think that's maybe a, an impression of Virginia would have. People may think of her perhaps during her periods of depression, but obviously those were only short intervals in her life. The rest of the time she was avidly entertaining, keeping up a social round that I couldn't possibly begin to compete with and writing at the same time. Um, and I think the other thing that surprised me about Virginia is how much of a passionate art patron she was. She was a collector and she was also a maker. She was a talented embroideress. And she commissioned works from her sister, Vanessa Bell, very much with the idea of campaigning for female patronage. So she was spending the money she'd earned from her own writing and her own press, the Hogarth Press, on works of art by a female artist. And she promoted those works by writing uh, catalogue introductions um, and by paying for opening night parties. And really, you know, this is a real you know, woman's statement of female patronage. So um, thinking about life at Monk's house, uh, in the 90s, 20s and 30s. Well, what a wonderful place to have been, what an incredible range of people she was entertaining every day uh, there. She once complained about having 16 uninvited guests turning up for tea. And those were people like T.S. Eliot, Lytton Strachey, Maynard Keynes, Lydia Lopakova, E.M. Foster. Um, E.M. Foster talked about long drunken evenings spent uh, talking about sodomy and Sappho with emotion. Uh, and so that's the other lovely thing about what an inclusive group of people these were. You know, nearly a hundred years ago, uh, and they were completely open to ideas of gender and sexuality in the way that we might be today. Um, so anyway, great for them. So I would um, strongly encourage you both to come to this wonderful exhibition at the uh, Fitzwilliam Museum to learn more about Virginia and about female artists of the day, and also to read my book, Rooms of Their Own.